The train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. Though dieselization was introduced three years prior under the modernization plan, 1958 was really when it started to take effect. It began sensibly enough with the pilot scheme, a small-scale program aimed at analyzing the reliability and performance of various test locomotives. Which brings us along to Donald's replacement. This was what Sir Topham told us and the mainline chaps that night. One of these prototypes was coming to Sodor for a trial. There were mixed feelings about this, let me tell you. Some of us couldn't believe head office's brazen insensitivity, while others resigned themselves to the fact it was bound to happen sooner or later. As the date of the Diesel's arrival drew near, the discourse more often than not devolved into discord. Needless to say, this got a little grating for some. Morning Gordon, why the grumpy face? I'm rather ticked off Peckett, and it's all to do with the forthcoming Diesel. Oh please no, I beg your pardon, I've already copped an earful from so many others, I can't hear any more hogwash about how it's not right, it's not fair, etc. It's like they've forgotten there's been a Diesel here for years. Did they think the ones built by BR were never going to come to the island? If they did, they're flippin' fools! I agree. What the, the, the what? I agree. We argued that exact point last night. My words were eerily similar to yours, but some refused to listen. Their obstinance is why I'm so perturbed. I feel like a prat. Go with the feeling. Have they really been griping to you? Aye, anyone would think I've become a therapist. Then it's only fair someone lend you an ear. What do you make of it? I don't think it's any different to when they build a new class of steamy to replace an older one. You are absolutely right. After all, the LNER wasted no time building faster engines than I, yet I harbor no ill will towards any of them. As Reginald said of this diesel, he should be given a chance. Wait, did you say he? Yes, our argument came after learning some information about him. For one, his name is... Bother! I've completely forgotten! Do we know what class he is? No, I can't remember that either. Goodness, my memory is absolutely shocking today. This has never happened to me before. Usually my wits are in top form. Maybe half the time. Oh, very good, Peckett. Very good. Thanks for delivering these, Kate. No worries, it's nice to get out of the mine once in a while. I just wish it was for a better reason. Is there a problem? We've had to scale back production since nearly a third of the workers have come down with the flu. How did that happen? I think they were taking bets on who could cough the most. This is all we needed. You talking about these cheap oil imports? Yes, they're killing the industry. The coal borders already started shutting down collieries all over the country. As many as 90 could get the chop. Not yours, surely. It's the most efficient in the region. It won't be able to keep that rating if the miners don't learn to cover their flippin' mouths when they sneeze. <sighs> ah well, at least the poor buggers don't have something more serious. And like I said, it allows me to get out and about. Tomorrow I'll be making a delivery to Ellsbridge. With any luck, I'll see Thomas. Too bad you weren't here earlier because he was. I'll bother. What was he doing? Leaving the shed. The shed? What was he doing in your shed? Well, he delivered a train of that cheap imported oil yesterday afternoon. He was too knackered to head back to Farqua, so he asked to stay the night. Which berth did he sleep in? The one next to mine. I see. Kate, there's nothing between us. Why'd you feel the need to say that? Just wanted to keep ahead of any suspicions you might have. Little late for that. What did you say? Nothing. No, no. What did you say? That it's a bit too late for me to not have suspicions about you two. I saw you both at the mine recently. You were acting pretty chummy, laughing and all that. He told a joke. I don't want to steal him from you. For your sake, I hope not. Is that a threat? No. A threat would be more like, if you take it from me, I'll bury you in the mine. I'd like to see you try. <coughs> uh, excuse me, ladies. What the? Who or what are you? I'm Joshua, your new engine. You're an engine? You look like a giant sardine can. And you look like a smoky old kettle. I'm not old. 
Matter of opinion. Build up your Welsh chart. Bug off your balmy bint. This isn't over. Tell me you're not all like that. We're not, I swear. You just call us at a bad time. Sorry, Joshua, you say? Welcome to Sodor. I'm Samantha, but you can call me Sam. And you can call me Josh. Something wrong? No, no, I'm sorry for staring. I didn't know what to expect from you, but even so, do you mind if I ask what you are? Not at all. I'm a Class 42, also known as a warship. Why warship? Maybe I was originally meant for the Navy. <laughs> you have a sense of humor. That'll go far around here. That's good because I really won't do well. And being here on the fabled island of Sodor is just amazing. You've heard about this place? The men who built me couldn't stop talking about it or the railway series. Let me give you some advice. Be tactful when talking about those books. A lot of the stories they tell are purely fictional and some of the lads are a bit sensitive about that. So nobody used a town to hide from the rain? No, an air raid. Right, thanks for the warning. Anyway, I suppose we better get started. I met Sir Tobin at Biggestown and he said you were going to show me the ropes. Yes, let's begin with some shunting. Shunting? Is there a problem? Sorry, I'm just a little surprised. I expected to be taking trains along the main line. That's what I was built for. You'll get the chance to do that. But since you're fresh out of the works, it's best we start off small. Fresh out of the works doesn't make me feeble. No, it makes you new. It'd be irresponsible to throw you onto the main line before we can assess your strengths and correct any problems that might emerge. That's what shunting is all about. I guess that makes sense. I know how you feel. I was the same way when I was first built, eager to show the world what I could do and frustrated at being confined to a yard. But it was there I proved my reliability, giving the higher-ups the confidence to move me on to other duties. All right, all right, you've made your point. If that's the way things are done, I'll play along. Tell me what to do. Fizzling fireboxes! What's wrong now? The same thing that's been wrong all day! You're tearing around like a lunatic! I was built for speed, so I'm leaning into that strength. Fair enough, but you have to prioritize safety over speed. I was being safe. None of the trains I shunted derailed, and I didn't smash up any buffers. Besides, I'm equipped with the very latest in vacuum brakes, able to stop in record time over a considerably short distance. I'm probably the safest thing running on these rails. Yes, well, thank you for the commercial. Now take it from me, your brakes won't always save you. Why should I take that from you? I don't know who you are. I'm James. The James? The one who- Tactful, Josh! Tactful! Uh, uh, you were going to ask about the bootlaces, weren't you? Should I stop right now? Yes. Otherwise, you'll have an accident right here. Blimey, settle down. No need to be so touchy. I have a right to be touchy. It's an embarrassing moment made worse that it's only half true. Which half? None of your business. Gah, you steamies are nothing but a pack of hot-headed, ill-mannered gits. Careful with the insults, Josh. Sir Topham doesn't take too kindly to them. But he takes kindly to the buffet, doesn't he? I always thought Fat Controller was a term of endearment. Didn't realize it was so literal. They should start calling him the Fat Hat. Sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear you over the ruckus inside your cab. What are you keeping in there? Sounds like a swarm of bees. That's my Bristol Citylay Maybach MD650 engine. Take a good listen, James, because it's the future. Now stand back and watch it in action. Yes, very impressive. Shut up. After being laid up at the works for nearly a week, Joshua returned to active service. However, he didn't go back to the yard, but was immediately placed on the main line, at head officer's request. Clearly, they wanted to show off their newfangled engines to the public and ordered Sir Topham to accommodate these wishes. The Class 42 was given his own passenger train. He took great pride and care in this responsibility, offering a smooth ride that always kept a time. The same could be said of his handling of goods trains, which he often shunned himself, recognizing the benefit of doing so. In all fairness, his performance can't be questioned, and he received justified praise for it. Unfortunately, he allowed the adulation to go to his fuse box. He became increasingly arrogant and boastful. This didn't bother head office, not since he depicted dieselization so positively. Indeed, his success is what emboldened them to send another of their prototypes to the island, one who was considerably more problematic. Good grief, what's that racket?
Where's my buffers, laddie? You're throwing up more smoke than me. Bug off, you. I can't help my engines run not. I didn't build it. All right, all right. Settle down. I meant no offense. Sorry, I'm just a little sensitive. I've been having all sorts of problems since I entered service. So the smoke isn't part of your design? Neither's the roaring engine. When pulling coaches, I found I have to park beyond the platform so I don't upset the passengers. Doesn't always work. Odd, the other fellow doesn't have these problems. So they keep saying, <sighs> and I so wanted to make a good impression. Don't go fretting, laddie. We all go through teething problems. How we handle them is the true test of our metal. That must mean my metal's lacking. Ugh, I don't feel too good. Well, we can't have that. Tell you what, how about I have some of the workmen look you over? I don't know if there's time. I was told I have to collect a goods train after this. Yes, I know. I was the one who shunted it. I also know it isn't meant to leave for another 20 minutes. If you wait over in Sighting 3, I'll have some of the lads give you a gander. That'd be great. Thank you. You know, I was a little worried about coming here. An entire island of steamies? I didn't know how you'd react. You treat us right, we'll treat you right. That's the Sudrian way. And the workmen are always eager to sink their tools into something different. Then you might want to tell them I'm a Metropolitan Vickers Diesel Electric Type 2. That's quite a mouthful, but no worries. I'll bring them over after I've shunted this lot. See you soon. Cheers. Donald, is it? Hey, what's your name? They call me Boko. Where is he? I don't know, but we can't wait around any longer. And I don't think we should leave. I still don't feel good. I know, old boy, and I'm sorry to push you like this, but BR is counting on us. We have to show them diesels are just as capable of working through their problems as steamies, provided the steamies don't sabotage the diesels. What are you saying? Maybe Donald was having me on and was never going to bring any workmen. Maybe he thought I'd keep waiting, making me late. I don't think he would. He seemed nice enough. Doesn't mean he is, and that other one we met, maybe he's the same. You mean Edward? You're getting paranoid. Doesn't mean I'm wrong. Let me tell you, I won't be tricked by no kettle. We'll take this train, even if it burns out my engine. I'd rather you not do that, but we do have to get moving. Let's go. That's a diesel. It's a waddle. A diesel. Oh, I thought you said diesel. I was very confused. No surprise, you get confused at the sight of your own reflection. And I have to keep saying, you're not really in the mirror, Bill. At least I don't break mirrors when I look into them. With that ugly mug, you definitely would. We had the same mug, you idiot. Do not do two. Do not do two. Fizzling fireboxes. What are you two havering about this time? Forget I asked. I don't want to. Oh, bother. He's gone. Who? The new Diesel, Boko. He was feeling a wee bit crook, so I promised to bring some workmen over, but I got held up. That's all right, we still got something to look at. Blimey, that's a decent patch. What did you say he was? Um, a Metro... Metropolitan Vickers Diesel Electric Type 2? You mean a Class 28? Oh dear. Why, oh dear. I've seen the plans for that class, and I reckon they're going to be real lemons. From the size of this, I think he has a leaking fuel pipe. So he's leaking fuel right on the tracks? That's not good. No. Where was he going, Donald? Wellsworth. That's lucky. We're heading that way too with a train of wood. Perfect. You can check the line along the way. I'll call Wellsworth and tell him to hold Boko until he can be assessed. I hope he doesn't drop too much oil in the meantime. Hello there. Do you mind? No, not really. I'm guessing you're Boko? Good guess. What do you want? We want to know why you've gone and nicked our trucks. Your trucks? Yeah, we were meant to take this lot, weren't we, Bill? That's right, Ben. Truck stealer, pull the other one. These are mine. Go away. You're a big bully. You'll be sorry. All right, what's going on here? Great, just what I need. Another steamy. Is something the matter, Boko? Yes, everyone's got it in for me. 
First some Scottish engine makes a fool out of me, and now these two are trying to rip me off. You got a problem with diesels, or just me? Settle down, old chap. Nobody is prejudiced against you. Don't be too hasty, Edward. This green lemon was acting like a tosser. How would you feel if you had a leaking fuel pipe? What are you on about? A phone call just came in. Some workmen found an oil patch on the tracks at Brendam. Donald did bring some over? Yes, there are concerns you might have been leaking oil onto the track. These two were supposed to be inspecting the line, and I hope they did. Yes, we did. We looked over every inch between here and the docks and didn't find a single drop. Since there was no danger, we decided to have some fun. We? You started this. I was just playing along. Did not, did to, did not, did to. Is this kind of thing normal? Indeed, old boy. Welcome to Sodor. I feel a lot better hearing you say that, Edward. I was so sure Donald was having a go at me, and when these two showed up, sorry I snapped at you. Don't worry, we're used to it. We're sorry too. Right, now we're all friends, we can get to work. Boko, you're to remain here until you've been looked over. As for you two, there's a load of girders for you to take over there. And on your way back, check the line between here and the junction to make absolutely sure there's no oil. Why? Don't you trust us? Frankly, no, but an important train will be coming through later tonight. I want to be able to tell the fact controller this section is completely safe. What sort of train? Isn't that a bird, sir? Yes, but in this instance, Condor stands for Container Door to Door. It's a new type of long distance express freight service BR is testing. One is scheduled to leave Sodor tonight. Joshua, you will pull it. Thank you, sir. Even if this hadn't been head officer's instruction, I would have given you the assignment. You've done an outstanding job since you arrived. Happy to do my part, sir. Just make sure you do it with aplomb and modesty. Sir, I'm fully aware you've been boasting about your successes. While it's important to take pride in one's achievements, it is unbecoming of a really useful engine to gloat about them. Is that understood? Yes, sir. I apologize if I offended anyone. Very good. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for dinner with my wife. I've been looking forward to this all week. You know how much I love a good buffet. Squealer. No, I didn't. So Tom always finds out these things. It doesn't matter. With or without BR's patronage, he's clearly impressed with my performance. Maybe you lot should think about retirement. Maybe you should watch your tongue before we start calling you Buzzbox. You wouldn't dare. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Forget about retirement. Go for a final firing. Craw! Disgraceful! Disgusting! Despicable! Detestable! What? How you feeling? Very sore and confused. This shouldn't have happened. Why not? Because I slammed on my brakes. They're supposed to be the best. I should have stopped sooner than I did. Josh, how close were you to the crossing before you realized it was blocked by a lorry? Close. And it's clear you were going the requisite speed for foggy conditions. Maybe if you'd been running light at two miles an hour, you might have avoided it. But even the best can't always protect you. I guess James was right. What about the lorry? Please tell me there wasn't anyone in it. There wasn't. The driver must have gone clear or went for help. Strange they haven't come back in either case. What about my driver? He's fine. Some cuts and bruises, but nothing serious. All things considered, this was a very mild accident. And here's why. Bust my buffers. Where'd you find that? In the wreckage. We think it was in the lorry. The places this thing gets to. Am I missing something? I'll tell you back at Crovens Gate. The lads will have their work cut out repairing you, but they love a challenge. We'll have you back on the main line before long. I don't think too many of the others will be happy about that. Why not? The fire and rescue chief became livid and rightly gave Joshua a tongue lashing before telling him of Adam's final firing. The class 42 was mortified by his appalling comment and swore he'd apologize the moment he was discharged. This wouldn't happen for an 
an entire month as the damage he sustained was quite severe, but the moment he was back in service, he lived up to his pledge. Not everyone accepted his apology, but enough did to ensure mainline operations ran smoothly. He stayed on Soto until the end of his trial, after which he was reassigned. I'm pleased to say he left on good terms and went on to have a productive, accident-free career. Unfortunately, his departure meant there was a gap in the mainline roster. Still wanting to push the effectiveness of its diesels, BR had Sir Topham fill the vacancy with Boko. This was not a smart decision, as the Class 28's problems continued to plague him. Yet ironically, his shoddy performance would be responsible for bringing to light some very surprising secrets. But that is a story for another day.